Hey friends, Stephanie Rupert here of The Perfect Follow. Today, I want to talk about bachata. And specifically, I want to talk about what it takes to be a good follower. Now, obviously, I don't know everything. And obviously, all leaders vary. And not everybody likes the same things. And it is totally, totally presumptuous to say these are the eight things or the seven things or whatever that a follower needs to do to be the most perfect follow possible in bachata. But I've come up with a list that I think is pretty good. Okay, first, hold the weight of your own arms. No leader likes to have to work hard, have to expend a lot of energy to hold you up. So what a lot of followers will do in bachata is sort of latch their arms onto their leaders and expect the leaders to hold the weight of their arms, to pull down in closed position, to sort of be a weight on their leaders. This isn't fun. It's not fun. So when you're there, even though you're laying your arms on top of your bachata leader's arms, shoulders, whatever, don't let them be weights. Hold your own weight and just let them grace the top of your leader's body. This applies on the body as well. So you all can also connect with your legs. You should connect with your legs. But when you're connecting with your legs, you want to be able to be in contact with your leader's legs and ready to be engaged with that leg movement that moves your hips. But you don't want to be clamped down on their legs so that they don't have freedom of movement and you don't have freedom of movement. Nobody can move because you're you've got a vice on them. Another really great thing in bachata is the same for the rest of the Latin dances. And that's the quality of being up. It's an inhalation, it's a suspension, it's a waiting, waiting, waiting for the next move to come. So you feel this waiting and your leader's with you there in that moment and you're waiting for your leader to give you something to do. And that suspension is an elevation. It's a breath up before you go. It's an opening of your rib cage, it's a end to go. And this applies to all of your movements, not just on four, not just on eight, not just before you start the basic. That's where the big suspensions are, but the general principle of being up, holding yourself ready, really key for being uh, fun to lead. Okay, so something else that people encounter problems with as followers in bachata is over-interpreting leads. This is especially a problem now that sensual bachata is becoming really popular. But basically what happens is the leader may say, push you here and intend for you to very subtly move. It's a very light push. It's just a feather of a touch. When you get a feather of a touch, give a feather of a follow back. Something that happens, especially now with central bachata and with YouTube and with people watching the videos and seeing the fancy things, when they feel something moving them this way, they don't think as much about how much they should be moving and think more about, oh, that really big thing I saw that one time or I took that one class on and it's this. And all of a sudden you're in this huge dip that your leader hadn't anticipated at all. All your leader wanted was a very subtle backwards motion of the left side of your body. That's it, that's all your leader wanted, but you went flying backwards because you saw this thing this one time. Also, develop sensitivity in your torso. Now, this may sound complicated, but it's not. It's about sitting still and listening. Sometimes a leader will say, oh, I could lead you with just two fingers. And that's a level of sensitivity. It gives your leader a whole range of possibilities for how to lead you and how to connect with you. You don't want to be a follower where they need, you know, the full strength of a palm and their arm to get you to do a body roll. But what if they could just do this? Or what if they can slightly roll their fingers down the back of your rib cage or your spine? Will you be responsive to that? Can you be responsive to that? You absolutely can. But you don't need to be able to do a bridge and put your head between your feet, right? You don't need to be able to have this incredible flexibility to be a subtle and responsive follower. All you need to do is be still and to wait and to feel the very delicate things coming and to respond with delicacy and kind. Very important that you always wait. I talked about being suspended, being up. You wait, you don't move, you don't predict, you wait for what comes. This doesn't mean you're entirely passive follower. It doesn't mean you don't communicate. It doesn't mean you don't style when you have room, but it means that you are constantly 
aware, constantly giving your leader options, constantly there for your leader to do things. So you wait and you follow and you don't do what you think you saw in that YouTube video. You don't do the steps that you learned in the class. You wait and you feel where you're being led and you let your leader take you. Now, if this means you mess up a few times because you don't really understand the shape of this move, you don't, maybe you're with a leader who's not leading it very clearly, that's fine. It's much more preferable to mess up trying to be a pure follow, somebody who follows what's given you rather than somebody who just guesses with random steps, emotionally connect. You can do this on so many levels, 100% of the levels connect with your leader in this way. Now, some leaders maybe aren't all that into intimacy, emotional intimacy, and that's fine. You don't need to turn this on all the time, but I think it should be a skill set that you can turn on. Connect with your eyes, you can wink, you can look at them like you care, right? Smile. You don't have to smile if you don't want to, but you know what I mean? Be engaged here. You can also emotionally connect with your hands. How are you touching them? Where? Do you have flexibility in that? Can you let your hands crawl over the back of their shoulder blades while you're in closed position? Can you let your elbow drape down? Can you touch the back of their neck? You don't want to overstep bounds of intimacy, but you can explore it and see how much your partner is giving you and give it back. Now, finally, you can add in your own musicality, right? You're not an inert follower. There is space given you. In open position, there's plenty of space in bachata to do what you like with your feet, with your hips, with your shoulders, with your rib cage. You can do body movements while you're doing the basic. You can spin on an axis. You can flip your hair. There's a lot of things you can do. And while you're doing this, you are contributing to the dance. You're communicating with your partner about what you enjoy, the kind of movement you like. You're expressing something in the music. You're laughing about something in the music together. Right? So that's my list of the things that I think are most important for being a good follower in bachata. A really delicious, uh, perfect follower in bachata. You know, technique is super important, of course, in a lot of ways, but far more important than technique is listening and connecting well. And uh, with a good leader, you can then have an amazing dance, no matter you know what kind of skills either of you have. So that's that. Please let me know what you think. Share your opinions. I'd love to hear them.